for five hundred nine dollars, that pretty much means that you need to you need to have done your due diligence when you get ready to take this exam. You need to be well prepared. You need to make sure you did your studying. You need to make sure you did your labs. You need to make sure that you're ready to perform. Welcome to Debt Free and IT. I'm your host, Mike. This podcast is for anyone who's looking to get into the IT industry, whether it's for a career change or you're just interested, I think you come to the right place. In today's episode, we're looking at the recently rebranded Security Ads from CompTIA. This certification was once the CASP Plus, then it was renamed this past December and updated with a new exam version. So what is the Security Ads certification? So this certification validates job tasks performed by a security professional with 10 years of IT experience and five years of security experience. And also it's designed around the tasks performed by senior security engineers, as well as senior architects. So this certification is meant to be a natural progression from the job roles that's aligned to the Security Plus. So if you're trying to break into cybersecurity, this certification is not entirely meant for you, but it is one that you could lead up to. This is a certification that you can add on your list. So once you get that Security Plus, and I do believe a Security Plus is probably the best option for someone that's trying to get into cybersecurity right now. So once you get that Security Plus, which eventually leads to that first job interview, then leads to that first job role, as you gain your experience through those positions that you work your way up to, then, like I said, it may come a time where you need to go and get this Security X certification. And the X in Security X stands for expert. So like I said, it's meant to be a higher level certification, something similar to how we see with Cisco, where you have the CCST, which is the entry level certification. Then you have the CCNAs, which is the associate level certifications. Then you have the CCMP, which is the professional level certification. And then you have the CCIE, which is the expert level certification or the highest certification you can obtain within the Cisco RAM. So this Security X looks like it may be CompTIA's way of adding those higher level certs, but having the X in the name of them that stands for the expert level certification. So with that being said, it makes sense that, okay, they say go get the Security Plus first. And then the security X is something the next step after that security plus some of the skills you will learn on this certification or some of the skills you will obtain on this certification. So first it goes into security architecture and then also you get into the security operations, uh, governance, risk and compliance, uh, security engineering and cryptography. Then moving on to the exam overview. So basically this exam covers the technical knowledge and skills required to architect, engineer and integrate and implement secure solutions across complex environments to support an enterprise while considering the impact of governance, risk, and compliance requirements. So this test consists of roughly about 90 questions. They're multiple choice and performance based, which leads me to believe that you're probably going to encounter some sort of simulations while taking this exam, similar to how we see in some of the other vendor exams. I know I pick on Cisco a lot. Uh, so usually in so some of the Cisco exams, you know, you have multiple choice questions, but sometimes you could get a simulation where you may have to do some configuration. So by this exam being also performance based, I'm pretty sure you're going to have some kind of simulations or some kind of something that you need to perform to own this exam. And then roughly this exam is 165 minutes and the cost comes in at roughly about five hundred and nine dollars. So that five hundred and nine dollars is not nothing to laugh at. So for five hundred nine dollars, that pretty much means that. You need to you need to have done your due diligence when you get ready to take this exam. You need to be well prepared. You need to make sure you did your studying. You need to make sure you did your labs. You need to make sure that you're ready to perform when you're going in to take this exam. So then roughly, just like some of the other exams, I know 509, that seems like a lot, but a lot of other ones is roughly around the same price. I think the CCMP may be around about four and some change. So most of them is roughly around about that four to 500 range, sometimes depending on the level of the certification uh, that has a lot to do with it. I know like the usually the associate level certifications is a little bit cheaper. And I think the security plus is a little bit cheaper than this 509 also. But then also, just like most exams, this certification is valid for three years. So roughly after three years, you probably need to 
recertify, renew that certification or get a higher certification or something of that nature. So basically that's about the sweet spot for most exams. I know the CCNA, any one of those certs expires after three years. And then also I think they have some sort of um, continuing education that you can take to recertify your exams. I see a lot of vendors starting to implement that. So if you saw my last video, Cisco has started to implement those changes, which I think they've been have done it too, where they've been implemented. But like I said, it's just starting to be more wide open to where you see a lot of other vendors implement that too, because I, I, I'll say it, you know, from someone that has been getting certifications for a while now, uh, mainly the CCNA, a lot of times just ended up renewing it or something like that. Sometimes it is a little bit tedious to go back and restudy for it. Now, Give and take, you know, a lot of times they've something done updated on that exam. There's new technologies you need to learn, and I'm all for that. But it is neat that a lot of these vendors have started to implement where you can do some additional training to recertify that certification that you already got. So I do think that is a plus for um, a lot of these certifications. So I'm pretty sure CompTIA has something along those lines, too. So, like I said, the cost of it is roughly about $509 and is valid for about three years. And then also on CompTIA's website, they did have a web a page devoted to some ways that you can save on this exam. So, pretty much I have the link in the description. So, if you're planning on taking this certification or any other CompTIA certification, click the link in the description and you may be able to find out there's a way that you can save on those exams and those certifications. Quick pause. I'd like to introduce you to The Law Files. The Law Files is a weekly newsletter to help you start your IT career with practical advice and tips powered by yours truly. So we launched it at the beginning of the year. It's packed with actionable advice, resources, and insights to kickstart your IT journey. The link is in the description as well as pinned in the comments. So don't miss out. And back to the episode. So who should take this certification or who is this certification for? So CompTIA recommends that anyone with a minimum of 10 years of general hands-on IT experience, with five years being hands-on security, with either Network Plus, Security Plus, CYSA Plus, Cloud Plus, Pentest Plus, or something along those lines. So basically, that doesn't mean that you have to have all of those certifications, but what they're saying is you need to have the knowledge of those certifications or the knowledge that those certifications provide you. So if someone went down and got those certifications, the things that you learn from it, you need to already have experience with doing those things in order to be someone that's recommended to take this certification. So, and this pretty much will fall in line for anyone that's been in security for a while. So if you're, if you've been in security five years and maybe you ain't got 10 years of, of experience overall, I still think that this certification may be for use being that it's a security certification. Then a lot of that, a lot of the things you encounter within those five years, it's probably going to be along the lines of what this certification entails. So like I said, CompTIA recommends 10 years of general experience with five of those years being in security. So like I said, this certification is meant to be more of a higher level, expert level certification. So when we compare it to other industry certifications, even on their website, they compare this certification to the CISSP, also the Certified Enterprise Defender Certification, the GIAC. And then also the Certified Information Security Manager, the CISM certification. So like I said, this certification aligns with all of those higher level security certifications, which is mainly geared for a lot of the certification you see a lot of security managers, um, a lot of people in those higher level positions, usually are the ones I see with these type of certifications. So like I said, if that's something that you're trying to go down, that's a path that's interests you. Then, like I said, you may want to add this certification on your list as something to look into and see whether or not if it's worth it. Now, being compared to the CISSP, I know that CISSP has been the, the holy grail for security for a long time, especially, you know, you meet someone got their CISSP, they look at as the top dog and, you know, saying it's well worth it, too. So, like I said, uh, to compare this certification to that, that was pretty interesting for, for me to see. So because, like I said, for a long time that ISC squared CISSP certification has been one of the top dog, top level security certifications for a while now. So like I said, I'm interested, interested to see where the certification will end up at or what will be people's thoughts on it as more people go out and take this certification. 
Uh, so it's interesting to see what's coming up in the future for this certification. Then some of the major differences from the CASP plus that this certification was pretty much updated from. So basically the CASP focused more on management roles. And then this certification here, they say it's designed for security architects and senior security engineers. So they're trying to focus more on the hands-on aspect. So not more of the management roles, which it could have fooled me because from the comparisons that we went over earlier, a lot of times those CISSPs and things like that, you do see a lot of managers with them, but also you do see a lot of security engineers and just overall high level security architects and people of that nature with them too. So like I said, this certification here is designed for more of those security architects, senior security engineers to where the CASP plus it focused more on the management roles with security. So like I said, they did an update they kind of flipped the script to where, okay, we was focused on more management. So now we're going to get back to the hands-on, the people in the field, the ones that's getting their hands dirty. So like I said, that is interesting to see. And then the security X also has labs, a lab component to it. So it has labs that's going to be developed for this certification for those that are studying for this certification. And also that's something interesting for me. I know I don't have any CompTIA certifications, but when the overall just looking at a lot of their certifications, uh, I know especially looking at like the NetWet Plus and things like that, you hardly ever see a lot of hands-on component to it. You know, to me, outside looking in, it looks like uh, to me a, a lot of information to understand and to grasp, but I hardly ever see any hands-on portions to it. So this is interesting with the Security X that, you know, it's one of the things that's highlighted that it has hands-on labs that's going to be developed which may be already out by now. So like I said, if you're studying for this certification, let me know what, your, what are your thoughts in the comments. You know, if you're already taking this certification, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments also. So next we're gonna look at the jobs you can land with this certification. So basically they list the security architect, the cybersecurity engineer, a SOC manager, cyber risk analyst, chief information security officer. So as you see, this is a wide range of security roles that you can land with this certification. So like I said, but most of these roles that I mentioned, they are higher level sort higher level roles. So there's not any role in this list that's meant for someone just breaking into cybersecurity. So it's one of the roles where the senior architect that's usually one of the highest levels of security that you can get. Uh cybersecurity engineer, that's a higher level. It's not the highest level in most cases. You know, you have that cybersecurity uh, analyst and cybersecurity engineer, then you may have a cybersecurity senior engineer. So, but then the SOC manager, so there is some man a management component component to it. And then the cyber risk analyst and also that chief information security officer. So when it comes to the security edge from CompTIA, like I said, some of my thoughts on this certification is, one of the things I like is that the new name. So the new name security edge, uh, for a long time, they have been the, like CompTIA has been the foundation for security certification with that Security Plus certification. So that Security Plus certification, I think by now is probably a household name. So I think rebranding this CASP Plus to something like a Security X, I do think that that was a, a good thing to do. I, mean, I think that by just from the name change, it's going to bring more awareness to the cert because most of the time somebody's looking up or searching in Google for security certifications. Nine times out of 10, Security Plus comes up. But now, just within that search for security certifications, when someone's looking for the Security Plus, they also see the Security X, even though this may not be a certification that they're, they can go and take then, but it does let them know that this certification is around and that this certification is out there for the future. And then also, I like the fact that, you know, it stated that there were some hands-on labs to this, to this uh, certification. So which is something that I, I've, I haven't experienced a lot of from CompTIA in the past. So if, there's, or if there are a lot of certification with hands-on labs, you know, please leave it in the comments. You know, but from my experience, I haven't seen where there was a lot of hands-on labs. And most of the certs I've really looked into was the Security Plus and Network Plus and things like that. So I know they have a whole lot of certifications out there. So it may be a couple of them with hands-on labs, but... For me, this was an interesting thing that this certification has hands-on 
laughs that you can do when trying to prep for this certification. So that brings me to the end of this episode. Hopefully you found some value in this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. If you're on Instagram, TikTok, or Facebook, you can follow me at Debt Free and IT. If you have any questions, you can email me at debtfreeandit at gmail.com or you can visit debtfreeandit with mike.com. Other than that, I'll see you next week. Peace.